So what is up, everybody? Today we're going to talk about trail cameras, um, kind of where to set them up, what's some, you know, kind of tricks and tips. We talk about that a lot, um, about trail cameras. Where, where do we want to put them up? Um, what, what are we trying to accomplish? What are trail cameras? Um, that's kind of what we're talking about today. And feel free to, uh, those of you who are listening, if you have additional tips or tricks, if you have additional questions that we don't answer in the podcast, uh, hit us up on any of our social media platforms. You can send direct messages to us. You can contact us through Messenger on Facebook. Um, or go ahead and send us an email to podcast at ForgottenOutdoors.com. Uh, we also have a website, ForgottenOutdoors.com. You can go to that website. There's a little uh, uh, message form at the bottom of the homepage. Fill it out. Send it to us. We want to hear from you. Uh, we want to try to answer your questions to keep these podcasts relevant to you and to what our audience wants to know. Which this last week, guys, has been awesome. So we launched our company. We got the website up and running. We have our store up and running. If you haven't checked that out, go check out the store. Uh, go on our website, ForgottenOutdoors.com. Uh, click on store. We have some merchandise like the hat I'm wearing, like the shirt Thomas is wearing. There's our shameless plug. Uh, yes. No, but it's been awesome. We, we've launched. We've launched some episodes, and we've actually gotten some awesome feedback from you yeah. guys. Yeah, you guys responded quickly. We got we got a few emails already, and we've had a few people subscribing to like our email uh, list and things like that, so it's been really exciting. We are excited to connect with you guys. Yeah, so thank you for that. Thank you for all those that have reached out and just said, hey, listen to it, liked it. Thanks for you guys that have been like, hey, here's some thoughts. Here's some concerns I have. We love that stuff. Because yes. if you haven't figured it out by now, we don't know what we're doing. <laughs> we are, we, we are definitely up. learning. We are definitely <laughs> learning as we go. Making it up as we go. Okay, so let's get into it. Yeah, let's do it. So I think kind of to start off with talking about trail cameras is kind of what they are. Uh, so trail cameras, they're a little compact unit um, camera that has a motion sensor and you throw it up in the backwoods or you throw it up on, you know, a water source or whatever it is. And when something walk by, walks by or moves it, um, triggers that sensor, snaps a picture. Um, that's basically what they are. And uh, most people use them for hunting. Uh, you know, I do know some people, if you aren't in the hunting scene, uh, I, I know people that have just thrown them up just to kind of figure out where wildlife is. They like to, you know, look at wildlife or capture cool pictures. Um, of elk, deer, all that kind of good stuff. And so um, very, very useful technology in the backwoods. Um, yeah, Tom, Thomas is kind of, you're getting into the game. Yeah, so trail cameras. I would say, I mean, I've, I've known what trail cameras are for a long, long time. Um, but it wasn't until probably last year that I really started using trail cameras and um, benefiting from trail cameras when I was doing my spring bear hunt with you and with Logan. Um, that was the first time that I even cared about trail cameras because um for us we'd set up a bait site with bear we've kind of talked about this a little bit i won't go into too much detail but we did set up uh, a couple trail cameras around our bait site so we could kind of pick up the patterns of when those bears came in yeah. and for me that was new uh but it was extremely beneficial because it helped me to know when to go and to sit the tree stand and watch the bait yeah and and so like we we've talked about it before but most of the hunting that you've done thomas has been up in like northern Idaho, mm -hmm. uh, which is a long way away from home for us. And you really only get up there, what, a week out of the year, the week that you're hunting it, really? Yeah, yeah. And so like that's not a very practical or realistic thing to do is set those up unless you're going to let them sit there all year, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And that's, and that's kind of what me and Ben are doing this year. We're trying to find some new spots that are closer to home um, so that, one, we can – uh, not go spend a week away from our families, yeah. um, but also just being being able to make it practical for us to go check check trail cameras, be able to hunt more often, and and so we're kind of trying to explore the area that we are in, um, find some spots that are closer, and the trail cameras are helping with that a lot. Yeah, yeah, and and trail cameras, you know, they they really do help with that. I don't have a ton of time type of thing because uh, when I was first getting into hunting, I didn't really use a ton of trail cameras. Um, I would just go up and kind of sit on some hillsides, try to go almost every morning or almost every evening and just kind of see where animals were moving that way. But that takes up a lot of time. And I'm sure, I'm sure your wife didn't love that. No, she didn't. We were <laughs> recently married. And so she was like, I'm okay with it. Yeah, go do your thing. But, um, 
I have twins that are supposed to be born like next week and a two-year-old daughter, so it's not in the cards for me right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, yes. So yeah, they, they save a ton of time because you can go and put them up there and not worry about them, and it will show you if there's animals in that area for the most part. I mean, they they might not cross that exact path that you're going down, and you might have to adjust them or move them around a little bit, but it gives you a really good indication of what's kind of moving in that area without you sitting up there in that area yourself. Right. So, so I guess a question I have. So you mentioned that you would go up in the mornings or in the evenings to kind of sit ridges before you had trail cameras. Right. Um, how often would you say you check trail cameras? And we're not going to, I'm talking like the ones that don't send pictures to your phone. Gotcha. We're going to get into that a little bit later, like the different types of cameras you can get. But like, if you don't have one sending you live updates to your phone, how often are you checking that? Um, about as often as Courtney, my wife would let me <laughs> No, I would try to, uh, depends on the time of the year. So right now it is like June, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah yes. End of June. End of June. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So end of June, you know, in the middle of the summer, I would probably check them every two weeks. I would probably go up every two weeks if they're, it's in deeper country because they're harder to get to. And if, in two weeks, I haven't had a lot of movement. I'll I'll move the camera. You're pulling it. Yeah, yeah. If I haven't had a lot of animals that have been crossing in those two weeks, it doesn't mean I'm going to move to a completely different area. But I might go throw it on a different trail camera, or not trail camera, on a different uh, game trail, or something like that. Um, if it's in a more accessible area, it'll be more frequent. So like whitetail hunting isn't that far away from where we live. It's a 15 minute drive and like a two minute hike. Um, so yeah, I, I would check those, you know, every week, if not twice a week. Right. Um, but like where we were hunting or setting up some cameras the other day, yeah. Um, it's like a six hour ordeal with yes. drive time and hike round trip. So I mean it's we would probably check those every two weeks, I would guess. So so that kinda sorry, this is kinda going off our original plan, but that brings up an interesting topic, I think, because right now, obviously, we're setting up trail cameras, trying to monitor animals to kind of prepare ourselves for September. Right. So we've got some months, like we've got months yeah. ahead of us. We're not, yeah. we're not concerned about, um, getting up there and actually hunting the animals for a long while. So if we're getting closer to September, are you pulling the cameras or are you just leaving them there, but maybe checking them more often? I'd leave them there and check them more often. Okay. Really? I mean, I do know some people that, <laughs> um, they when they kind of get to those hunting months, they'll pull the pull their trail cameras just because there's so much more traffic up in the mountains. They don't they don't, get they don't want them get stolen, or they don't want people walking by and being like, "Ooh, I'm gonna hunt this area now because there's trail cameras." And that they don't give away their means, spot. Yeah, so I do know people that do that. Um, like where we're going, I think it's high enough. I don't think we'll run into that problem very much, but I don't know. We haven't hunted it before, so so we'll see. Um, so I do know that I, I personally like to like to check it because here's, here's the thing for me. So like what we're doing with our trail cameras right now, we're, we're gearing up for September. That's during the rut. So the, these bulls, you know, they're trying to breed, they're going to start moving around. And so I like to leave them up there because it's like, all right, we've seen these regular bull patterns. They're walking around normally. And all of a sudden overnight, we have some crazy movement going on They're They're in the middle of the day. We're seeing bulls that we haven't seen before. That Those are kind of indicators that it's like, all right, something's kicking off. We need to be up there on the mountain hunting it right now. Same with whitetail hunting. You know, it's like, okay, we see the same buck in the middle of the night. You know, we see the same couple does in the middle of the night moving. And all of a sudden it's like, all right, this is a brand new buck and it's in the middle of the day and he's trailing some does. We need to be in some tree stands because the rut's on and this is the time that we're going to get something killed. Yeah, so I think that that's a re this is a really good point of uh, or point of transition into the different technology. So, um, you know, if we're talking about traditional trail cameras that most people are probably familiar with, you set it up on a tree, kind of like what we talked about, maybe every week, every other week. You're going up there, you're checking it, you're pulling an SD card out of it, and you're plugging it into your laptop or into your phone, and you're scrolling through hundreds, maybe thousands of pictures. Um, trying to see which ones actually have animals on them. Yeah. So, so that's kind of the more traditional sense of um, trail cams. But recently, I would say within the last few years, 
they were coming out with trail cameras that will hook to a cell tower, send you a picture every time it gets movement on on the camera. Yeah. Um, and t- I mean, with what Ben's talking about, how like you're looking for pattern changes, especially with elk and with the whitetail, the ruts on, you're starting to see something different. That is where I think that these cell phone cameras um, are game changer because you're gonna you're not gonna go up and check a week later and be like, oh my gosh, I missed it. It was three days ago. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all the, all these elk yeah. came through three days ago and now they're gone. But instead, you'll get a hit from your cell phone camera, and it's gonna hit, and then you can pack up, go. You'll be there in two hours, three hours, and you're ready to hunt these things. So, um, I guess Ben, maybe just explain. Your experience, just where I'm more new to it, I feel like yeah. if you'll explain more the technology side of trail cameras, the benefit of traditional versus kind of what we what we got into this last week setting them up. Yeah. So, yeah, the technology has been awesome. Like, the, the changes in technology have been incredible with the trail cameras. So, when I kind of started into the game with trail cameras, they were basic trail cameras, spending about 150 bucks probably, you know, 100 bucks on a camera. Um, it was the traditional sense and you need to go up with some double a batteries switch out your batteries you need to go up with a new sd card switch them out and like 16 double a batteries yeah it, like a lot of AA batteries. It's like, yeah <laughs> it is a panel of double a batteries and you're switching them out you know every month or whatever you know depending on the camera um but we go up there and and they they took some pretty good pictures and then you know a year or two later the cameras were getting just better quality pictures you know instead of the 12 megapixels they're 18 megapixels and they're super clear and they're awesome um and then they started getting into the game of like thomas was saying these pictures that will set these cameras that'll send to your phone um i personally didn't get one until just barely um but um logan guy we hunt with um we've mentioned before outfish me idiot anyway (laughs) um (laughs) yeah he he got one and we tried it for bear hunting uh one year and this one it was expensive uh it was one of the earlier ones and it was like 700 bucks expensive um camera wise and so a little harder to get into um but we threw it up on the on our bear bait and man, it was a game changer Yeah, because before, I mean, our bear baits high and we go up and we'd be like, Oh dang it. Like nothing's hit the bait in a week. You know, <laughs> we didn't need to check it or we'd wait another week and the, the bait would be cleaned up. We'd go through our camera and be like, they cleaned it up the first night. We should have had more bait in there. Um, another plus for that, having one that would send it to your phone and be like, all right, we got bears up there right now and we're hiking in. We need to be super sneaky and try to shoot one of these bears yeah. out of the bait. Yeah. And that, I think that that's even a, kind of a safety precaution for, especially bear hunting. I mean, yeah. not so much with deer and elk cause they're, you know, a little bit more skittish. You can kind of play your cards on that one. But with bear, I mean, if you know that the bear's there right now and you're hiking into it, you might be you know, consider being a little bit noisier so that you give the bear a chance to run off. Now you chamber that round (laughs) or that thing on the ground (laughs) or or you chamber around. That's true. But that's the thing is, you know, it, it, it is kind of a, an alert system and you and Logan have talked about times where you guys have been working close to a bear bait. Um, and Logan got pictures from that camera on his phone. And then you guys have kind of talked about just going up right then. Yeah. Yeah. We, we weren't, we weren't working like our job, but we were up, um, honestly just scouting out new places. And yeah, while we were up in that area, um, we got a ping on his phone and it was like, Oh crap, there's a bear in there right now. So he snuck up and he shot a bear out of that bait. Um, just from getting a picture off of his camera. Um, so yeah, it's crazy technology. And, um, you know, I, I have heard some people bring up the point where it's like, I don't like to use them. You know, I feel like it's kind of an unfair advantage um, throwing up an eye, per se, that shows you what's going on on a tree and you're not actually there. Um, I feel like it's kind of cheating in a way. And and maybe it is. Um, I know I know a lot of people have different opinions about, you know, what's ethical and what's not. Um, I know that back in the day, you know, that older generation, they didn't have that technology. But at the same time, they had a lot more game than we have right now. You know, the, uh, a lot of the older generation that I've talked to, they always talk about the decline in, in numbers that, that we have nowadays. And so it's, it's a lot more difficult in a sense to get on those animals. And so, you know, you using these trail cameras, this technology that's, you know, 
at our disposal kind of evens those odds a little bit more and helps us be able to to harvest an animal and and when we're hunting you know it's not just about yeah we're killing an animal we're throwing some big antlers up on the wall and we've talked about this i think in the past and and we'll talk about it more because i feel like it's so important hunting is not just uh i'm gonna prove how much of a man i am today and go shoot the (laughs) biggest animal out there i think if that's the reason that you're hunting you're wrong yeah, I'll be you need bold to get out of the game you're now. Wrong. Like, <laughs> that is not the point. It's not to prove to your friends or your family how tough you are, how big of a man you are. That's not what it's about. You know, I, I'm not saying that big antlers don't excite me, and I know they excite Thomas too when we see a and big And I'm not saying that it's not the goal, you know, like yeah, you want to shoot a mature animal. Yes, for a lot of reasons. Yeah. One, because, you know, they're cool and they, they got big antlers, and one, another one is because. They've had time to breed and they've lived a long life, but, but I, I, yeah, for me, you know, it's, it's about putting food on the table for your family. It's yeah. about getting up into the outdoors, um, and for yourself or to, to build those relationships with people that you're close to. And I just think that deep down inside it, it's, it's in our DNA, you know, like if you go back a couple hundred years, this is, this was it. Yeah. If you wanted to live, you were hunting, you were gathering, you were doing something to to take food. You're going outside. Well, you lived outside to begin right. with, yeah, right? That's true. <laughs> but that was it. And and you know, maybe maybe it's not in some of our DNA now, but for me and I think for Thomas and I think for a lot of people that you know hunt or wanting to get into it, that there's something about it that it drives you into the outdoors and to do this. So Yeah, and this is I mean, this kind of this might seem kind of like a tangent that <laughs> we've gone on at this point, but this is something that me and Ben talk about all of the time. Almost every time we come together to do these podcasts, to meet about, um, our business, it seems like we are always talking about this, um, this concept of ethical hunting, doing it for a purpose other than just putting a trophy on the wall. Trophies on the wall are awesome. And I, like Ben said, they excite me. I love to see them, but end of the day, if that's the reason you went out, then that, I mean, I feel like that might be a little backwards. I agree. You know, we're we're here to be ethical. We're here to, um, you know, practice good behavior with these animals, um, and exercise good dominion with them. And and part of that is using them for the purpose of putting food on the table. Yeah. And getting back onto our topic of trail cams, oh, I feel like the trail I, cams. Oh, go ahead. I might stop you. Yeah, just talking about like whenever we're getting together, we're talking about this topic. So. Last week, Thomas and I, we put up some trail cameras and we're going to get into that more up in the mountains. And it was like an hour and a half drive. And that we should have had some microphones and the camera <laughs> rolling because this was a topic straight for hour like an hour and a half and digging into it. And we had some differing opinions on some minor points and for we sure. talked back and forth. But about this, what is ethical hunting and what? why do we hunt and what what is a wrong reason to hunt and what's what's the right reasons to hunt and i think it's a lot case to case basis but it's so important and if if you're a listener and you're considering getting into this sport i think it's something to consider because yeah. taking a life should never be taken lightly in my opinion yeah even it if it's an animal it doesn't matter if it's a human or an animal it shouldn't be taken lightly well you shouldn't probably take a human's life but <laughs> at all at all <laughs> there we can draw the line there right no but like on an animal I, it shouldn't be taken lightly so it needs to be taken into consideration of why you're doing it you know and, and i think that it can be different reasons for everybody but I think that as a hunter, you need to know those reasons. Yeah. And you need to be able to stand behind those reasons and feel good about it because there is a sense of remorse every um, time. Every time you take a life. Mm -hmm. And I think that the day that you stop feeling that little bit of pain, that little bit of regret almost when you've pulled the trigger and you've put down a magnificent animal. I think something might be messed up in you. I think something (laughs) might be wrong and and you should probably stop. I'm serious. Like I think that if you can see this majestic animal that you've been tracking for, for weeks, you know, and that you've been taking pictures of for, for the whole year or your whole life. And you've never done this. And, and you put the crosshairs on this big bull elk that is just magnificent, beautiful animal. And you take its life, you stop its heart 
and you don't feel anything, you, you, you're you just like, oh, sweet, yeah, some <laughs> antlers for the wall. I think something's wrong with you. I, and I, I don't think that that you should be hunting. I think that you should find a, a safer hobby <laughs> for your mental state. <laughs> Not to offend anybody here, but uh, this is just some true talk here. And we've gotten way off of trail cameras yes, we have. <laughs> on a tangent. So let's get back into it before we say something we regret. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think, uh, you know, it's just, I guess that's kind of, where, where I was going is I was going to say um, the purpose behind why you're using trail cameras, I think, will probably determine if it's cheating or not cheating. Yeah. If you're using it for food, then I don't see a problem with that. If you're using it to, you know, see where they're coming out of private land onto public land, <laughs> then that's, you know. Yeah. But, you know, that's the, to each their own. Ultimately, we're not here to tell you how to hunt or or, you know what kind of a person you are. Right. Um, but that's, you know, obviously everyone has differing opinions and we have differing opinions. Yeah. And I think that, you know, that's something that we'll continue to get into as we continue to do these episodes, because it is something that we're passionate about, something that gets us excited. And that's why we, obviously we've taken this tangent is because it's something that we feel passionate about. Um, yeah. and, and, and ultimately I think down the road, you'll continue to hear us talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, but one thing that I wanted to ask about trail cameras since like on this topic of cheating or not cheating or whatever is, is there any kind of regulation from like Idaho fishing game or any kind of fishing game that you know of? Cause I, I don't know of any, but I haven't done a ton of research on it. No, not, not that I know of. Um, the only thing I can think of is private land. You know, like if, if the, you're putting cameras on somebody else's property without permission, obviously, no, no, you shouldn't be there in the first place. Right. And, and here's another tangent. Don't trespass. <laughs> Don't trespass. Gosh, that pisses me off. Like when you're out in the there's there's enough public land. Let's just put it that way that that we shouldn't be trespassing on other people's property. Um, so many people out there are more than willing to let that let you drive through their property or even hunt some of their property. If you approach them, you ask them, you know, you go through the right channels. Yeah. It, it doesn't turn into a thing, but don't just assume that you can go on somebody else's property and there's not going to be any consequences. For sure. It, it, it's just, it's cheap. It's, it's not ethical in my opinion. And I think, um, I guess just something regulation that just came to my head to think about and just to throw out there because I feel like it, it relates to uh, trail cams, is drones. So oh, yeah. with drones, um, if you're flying a drone, whether you're hunting or not, um, if you fly a drone, is it that day you can't hunt till the next yeah. day? Is that the, is, So it's similar to like flying a plane. Yep. So if you're familiar with um, like people who hunt in Alaska, a lot of times they're flying in. Um, the rule with that is that you're flying in, then once that plane lands, you've got 24 hours. You can't hunt. Um, and the same thing with the drone. So if you're, t you're up in the air, you're flying over trees, taking pictures, maybe even you see animals, maybe you don't see animals, regardless, the rule is 24 hours. Yeah. So just something to consider if you're into outdoor photography or you're just into monitoring these animals, that's great. That's fine. But if you want to pick up a rifle and go hunt them, then, uh, you know, you just, just make sure you are aware of those kind of regulations as it relates to taking pictures and photographs with, yeah. of, of these animals. Yeah, and that's in the state of Idaho. You know, Thomas said, mentioned that that's true to Alaska too and some other states, I'm sure. Just if you're getting into this, always keep up on your regulations. For sure. Uh, because that applies to us too. I, I'm sure that we're going to put out some hunting videos this fall for you. We do have a drone. We're going to take some awesome shots, but we're going to have to do that some other time, not when we're trying to hunt it because, yeah, in Idaho, if you're flying, if you're flying drones, you can't hunt. So, yeah, just... A good reminder, always be aware of your regulations, and they often change. Yes, so, uh, get keep, the up-to-date books. Yeah, <laughs> not just not just the right years, but they're pulling out like first and second editions and stuff. So, yeah, yeah, look in the books. They're in all of, like all your hunting stores pretty much. Um, yeah, and you can always call them, get online, yep. look up that. For sure. Um, so I, I guess just one last topic that we wanted to cover tonight with, as it relates to trail cams, is... Uh, Thief prevention is how we've titled it. <laughs> um, essentially, uh, kind of like what Ben talked about earlier on, once hunting season gets to its peak, then there's going to be a lot of traffic, um, which means people are going to be walking past your cameras most likely. They may even approach your camera. Um, 
and that's happened. I mean, we've caught pe- people on our cameras. We've caught pictures of them. Sometimes it's Looking just right up their nostrils as they're trying <laughs> yeah. to get into our camera. <laughs> and so, and sometimes it's harmless. You know, they just are hiking, yeah. and they might even notice the camera and then mind their own business. But there are times where people will try to take your camera. So there is some equipment built onto the cameras to prevent this. Um, ben knows a little bit more about that. So tell us about that. Yeah. Uh, so some of the cameras, um, depending, have codes, you know, passwords that you can't get into them um, without that. So if somebody grabs it, it's still going to get stolen, but you can't do much about it. Other ones, you know, like the little door that opens up that you can get your SD cards in. I think most cameras, they have a little eyelet. You can throw like, you know, a little padlock or something like that through. Um, kind of easy to break off. They can still take the whole camera because, you know, most cameras, they come with like a strap um, that you just strap it around a tree. Um, they do make lock boxes. This is really honestly the way that you, if you are worried about your cameras, you should secure them. So you have lock boxes that you can put big old lags through the back of them. You put your camera in there and then there's a little case that comes over top. You padlock it. Solid metal box. And if you're getting into bear hunting and you're running a bait site, I would recommend this too because not only do humans mess with cameras, but animals will too. You know, bears, they'll get curious. They'll see that infrared light go off and they'll go and mess with it. They'll tear it down. Funny story, actually, (laughs) with that. So... I had um, two cameras, two cameras in this one hole. It was a little bit more of like a accessed road. It was a little lower country. And there's a little wallow, mud wallow for elk. It's like a just muddy area. And I had this herd of elk that would come down in here into this wallow, you know, every couple days. And they'd hang out for a couple hours. Um, So I go back to check my cameras and both of them are gone. And I'm like, son of a gun. Like somebody stole my freaking cameras. Somebody came down in here and stole my cameras. They're gone. And I was so ticked off. And so I don't, I don't think I found them that day. I think I came back to put up another camera and I look down in this wallow and I see like a strap hanging out of the mud. And I'm like, what the heck? So I hike over into this mud and I pull up the strap and there's my camera on Boy the end behold. of it. <laughs> and so I start looking around in the mud and I found the other one. So I'm like, what the heck? Like, did somebody throw my cameras <laughs> into in the, the mud. mud? Like, what is going on? So I opened them up, pulled out the SD cards and I got to looking. And I'm like looking at this elk herd that's in there. I'm like, oh, this is sick. And I see this cow elk walk over to the one of them. And she's like, I'm like looking up her nose and she's like licking the camera. I have like a picture of like her big old tongue, like half cover in the lens. And then all of a sudden it's like a picture, like looking at the underside of this cow. And then the (laughs) next one's like dark black in the mud. And it was like a similar thing to the other one. So these elk got curious hanging around there, started like licking the cameras, chewing on the straps, ended up tearing them off the tree, both cameras. Yeah. And, and put them in the mud wall. So, um, yeah, those lock boxes are awesome for protecting against people and also protecting against animals because, you know, they're an investment. Yeah, you know, they for sure. are. Like the cheaper cameras, you can get some cheap cameras for like 30, 40 bucks. Right. And they're going to be cheap. Uh, you can get an okay camera, you know, for 70 to 100 bucks is, you know, you can get into a decent camera. 150 bucks is right. a nice camera. And then you get into the ones that, send you pictures and those jump up in price. Um, I was well, saying- this year, this year we got Ben kind of mentioned that he got some new ones that send to your phone this year. Um, so this is just a little plug. We got the spy point. Yeah. I don't remember the model number. This is not sponsored by the no, way. No, <laughs> it's not sponsored, but spy point camera has definitely come out and kind of disrupted the market of uh, yeah. cell phone cameras because like ben mentioned earlier logan bought one that was like six seven hundred bucks um that was one of the earlier models it did take better pictures yeah it definitely did um but like higher quality pictures and these spy point cameras while their picture quality is not great i mean 199 you know 200 bucks yeah and you're into one of these that will send the pictures to your phone it's real time live updates and I mean, it's worth every penny. Like we've already been seeing, we set them up a week ago almost, and we've been seeing. Saw a bobcat. Yeah, we've been seeing pictures coyotes, almost every day. Every deer. day we're getting them. We had a bull elk go past. A pretty sweet bull. Yeah. Um, moose. 
So, it, so. you know, it's just it's cool because otherwise you're playing the guessing game. And yeah, it would be like, has an animal even walked by him? Are they even right. working? Yep. Hopefully they're on, you know? Yeah. So, so I mean, they're, they're killer camera. And yeah. for 200 bucks, I mean, you just can't beat that. So Yeah. So kind of on the technology side with these new spy points that we got, which is so cool. So the traditional ones, you know, like you have that, like a million different AA batteries that you put in them. Um, a lot of the ones that send them to your phone, they have like rechargeable AA batteries and they have this long cord and this big old solar panel that you throw up on a tree. Um, and that's like the one that our friend Logan had. And that got torn down a bunch of times by elk. Uh, that solar panel did because it attracts them for some reason. But these spy points, you have the camera and then just built on top, you have this little tiny solar panel. And yep. then you have like a little battery, lithium battery pack that's not double A's. And so it just charges. We, we haven't had to switch it out or anything. Our, yeah. our cameras have kept full charges since we put them up there a week ago. So yeah. awesome technology there that we don't even have to, not only do we not have to go and check SD cards, but we don't have to worry about the battery life. Yep. You know, it recharges itself up there on the mountain, which is awesome. And and because it's hooked up or linked to the phone, it tells you your battery life. So if, yeah. you, if you're not getting a ton of sunlight, then eventually, yeah, that battery is going to drain, but you'll know when it's drained. So then you can just go up and take it down and charge it up and do whatever you need to do. Yeah. But I think that pretty much covers it. That kind of covers what we wanted to talk about today. Yeah. I just wanted to put in one more plug for contacting us. Uh, you can hit it up, hit us up at podcast at forgottenoutdoors.com. That's an email. Uh, send it to us. Send us whatever questions, comments, feedback you have. Um, go to our website, forgottenoutdoors.com. Like I said, down at the bottom of the homepage, there is a message section where you can fill out the form and it will send it to our email as well. And so we will get those and, you know, we're going to do our best to respond to those as quickly as we can. Um, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you want, find us and uh, and let us know what you think because we, we're, we're very open to feedback, especially now. We're trying to learn. We're trying to grow. Um, we're trying to kind of build um, this business from the ground. So... Um, we've got a lot to learn, and so we feel like your guys' feedback is much appreciated, and it helps us to better, um, you know, provide you the content that you want to see and, or or listen to. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're all all we're trying to do is help build confidence in the outdoors. That's what we're um, all about. Whether that's hunting, fishing, backpacking, hiking, you know, camping, whatever it is, if we can help you guys to build that confidence to take those steps into the outdoors or if you're already doing it to build more confidence yep. and get into new arenas of the outdoors, that's what we're trying to do. And it helps us immensely when you guys tell us how we can help you. So we're not just kind of grasping at straws saying, I think, I think the people want to know about this. I think <laughs> that they want to know about this. When you guys come and tell us and we're having multiple people say, Hey, you really should talk about this. Hey, I really have questions about this. It helps us to, to help you guys better. So please hit us up. Yeah. podcast at forgottenoutdoors.com um all of our social media stuff um that thomas just mentioned please 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 reach us out reach out to us and let us know how we can help you guys and with that thank you for listening to forgotten outdoors podcast uh we look forward to visiting with you again